The topic for today's video is the voltage-gated sodium channel that occurs in neurons. It exists at the axon hillock and along the length of the axon, and it's responsible for the propagation of an action potential. It's also responsible for the refractory period of the neuron and the unidirectional nature of an action potential. Let's take a closer look. So here's our voltage-gated sodium channel. You can see the voltage sensors colored in pink in this animation. Because the voltage sensors are positively charged, they're repelled by other positive charges. So at resting potential, which is around negative 70 millivolts for most neurons, there will be more positive sodium ions outside the cell than inside the cell. The voltage sensors move down, causing these purple gates to snap shut. So, at resting potential, the gate is closed. Sodium ions cannot get through. This corresponds to the flat line at the beginning of our action potential graph. However, if the neuron is receiving an excitatory signal, the number of sodium ions increase within the cell. And if we reach the threshold potential, this will repel the positive charges on the voltage sensors and cause them to move up. This, in turn, causes the gates to open, and sodium floods into the cell. This is represented by the long, steep part of the graph, where the potential is rising very quickly. However, around positive 30 millivolts, the inactivation gate will engage. This will block the further influx of sodium, even though the voltage gate is open. The inactivation gate will engage just around the peak of the action potential graph which marks the beginning of the absolute refractory period. The absolute refractory period is the time in which it's impossible to fire another action potential because the inactivation gate is engaged. It doesn't matter how much stimulation the neuron receives, the channel will not open. At the peak of the action potential, the potassium channels will open. I haven't pictured them in this video, but the important thing to know is that this will lower the cell potential by releasing potassium ions out of the cell. Once the voltage is low enough, this causes the voltage sensors to snap back, which closes the voltage gate and opens the inactivation gate. This marks the end of the absolute refractory period and the beginning of the relative refractory period. If we receive enough stimulus, we can overcome the relative refractory period and fire another action potential if we want to, because the inactivation gate is now open. You can see how the inactivation gate forces the action potential to proceed in only one direction. All along the axon, there are voltage-gated sodium channels. The channels to the left can influence the channels to the right by changing the potential and moving the voltage sensors. However, the channels to the right cannot influence the channels to the left, because the inactivation gate is engaged. Of course, this video is just focusing on the voltage-gated sodium channels, but there are a lot of other channels and pumps involved in the action potential. If you'd like to see a more comprehensive review of different channels involved in generating an action potential, please let me know in the comments below. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.